Hey, buenos días, ¿cómo estás? Hi guys, so I'm so happy you have new Bogu and everything. Uh, first of all, sorry for the English. My Spanish is getting worse and worse, but I'll be happy to practice when I'm back. Um, this is uh, this video is about how to tie the man, how to wear it, how to protect it from the sweating and basically enjoy it and have it as long as possible. Yeah, so I have a pair of kota here and uh, this is the man. So first of all, I think very important thing is to basically have two tangles always. So I use this smaller one and I put it here. And I put, uh, this is the regular size, but I wear it around my head, right, right inside. So basically, in ideal case, my head is not in contact with the man, okay? There's always tangle between me and man, somewhere. But in perfect fit, the tangle is not visible from outside. So there is no tangle like visible here, okay, like this, or um, it's it's not popping out out from the back like this, okay. It's like everything neatly inside, just your basically head having tangled around it inside the man, okay. So this is the first and I think very basic thing, having two tangles. One can be smaller under your chin, and one can be a regular size around your head. And it, 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 the practice is quite hard, uh, national team or whatever. You do a lot of uh, and so on. Best if you have two sets, okay? So one you start with the, tra uh, the training with, and another one you put in the first break, when it's all wet, you put it, throw it out and you take the second set which could be dry, okay? And this will basically prevent the sweating, get inside the band. It will stay within the tangles where you can easily wash after practice, okay? So that's the first thing. Second thing, how to bend the man and how you should wear it comfortably and so on. So uh, this is very important. You can notice that one line, this part is called uh, mengane, and uh, there is one slot that is wider than the others. It's called monomi, okay? And this is exactly the spot where you want to look through into your opponent, okay? So when you are having a man, you want to look with your eyes through this wide opening, okay? Like not here, or not here, okay? Why I'm saying it? Because it can great affect your candle quality, okay? And the when you tie your uh, himo, okay, the, the knot you make in the back should be at the eye level, okay? So ex approximately where is this monomy opening? There should be your knot. Okay, and the back of the man. So not low, not too low, not too high, so it would slip, but somewhere at that level. Okay, so when I'm going here, it's approximately here, and you can notice the stitching somehow in uh, nowadays man is diagonal here. Okay, so exactly where I sh I'm supposed to have my knot, and it goes right to the skidare. Okay, there's a diagonal line, and that's exactly the line you want to bend your man with. Where you want to bend your man, okay, at this at that line. So you bend it as high as possible, okay, and. It goes like in front of the mengane, like around your, around your monomy, okay, as far to the front as possible. 
and you do the same with the second part okay and you end up with your man being in this shape okay and at the back you want your man to have this shape okay so it's kind of like cylinder uh, like yeah. conical cylindrical okay so basically this is it so if you can tie it in this position and it, it can stay that way and basically dry after practice it's okay so you can leave it that way use your chemo basically to fix it in the place and uh, and uh, leave it to dry out outside okay if uh, I can maybe show you later, but if uh, the sweating go through your tangoes and it uh, basically soak inside the man, so after practice you can have the salty maps like like around here or here, okay, and maybe sometimes it even go outside, so you have salty map like white maps here. It's basically great if you take your I usually do it when the man dries after practice because I can see the maps when it's uh, freshly wet I, I don't see it too much so wet your tengui like w make it wet really solid wet and you basically swipe it down the, the, the white maps you just swipe it down and the idea is basically to absorb the salt into the tengui and also give the fresh water and make the, the salty mixture inside your man uh, much, more, uh, much less dense, okay? So it will kind of balance, yeah? The saltiness between your tengui, which is sweet, and the man which is salty will equalize and it will make a man less salty, okay? That the maps will disappear and you do want to do it with a really wet tengui because you don't want to swipe your indigo color off okay so you are kind of uh, making it less dense not really like scratching it down okay that's not really needed okay just make it really wet and like make it less dense the density of the salt maps will, will be lower and it will disappear. <coughs> okay, so after each practice, it's really important to dry your bogu. It, it, it's something that will make ba basically influence the durability and how long you, it will serve you the most. Okay, especially this part here shouldn't get wet like never. Okay, you don't want this part to get wet because then it will become much more fragile and it's the impact zone and basically if this breaks, your man is gone. Okay, so this is the most critical part. You can see that the color is swapping off, but it is not a real problem. You, you, can, uh, you can restore the color easily. Okay. Um, so that's the mangana then and uh, I will show you maybe how to tie it the man but second thing I wanted to talk about kote so kote are part of the bogu that get wet maybe the most of all okay and it's really important and life affecting that every practice after each practice when the kote is basically wet uh, through uh, you stretch the skin on your palm as much as possible okay so this is the way how you grab your shinai and basically after practice you do this okay you you stretch it really and let it dry okay and the thumb the same okay so this is what I do every practice, after every practice, I do it like this and then I make it a little bit wider here.
because it tends to close and that's it okay and you can let it dry somewhere or if your crop that are really like maybe one uh, kilo heavier because of your sweating you can put them <coughs> uh, on the ground basically in this position okay and you can use your hair dryer put it on some middle mode or whatever make the distance like not too close so you won't burn everything but also not far and basically you run the hot air through your cotton and it will dry basically within 15 minutes okay within 15 minutes is dry you can practice again that's especially handy when you have just one pair and you are practicing three times a day so if you are going for the second practice and your cotton are wet already yeah, basically this part will be destroyed very fast okay because it's wet it's salty and you are going to basically use it heavily the second time third time and it doesn't have time to recover to dry out okay so it's great to have a hair dryer any any one is sufficient enough and you run the air, hot air through your cotton okay it's also possible with one hand dryer to dry like six pairs of cotton you build a pyramid with your cotton okay and then you run the hair uh, you run the hot air through all of them so basically one your body taking hair dryer is the star because you just uh, want to be nice to him and uh, dry your cotton with him or her okay so this will make your cotton last ages okay five years easily i think also if you have a like a little bit tearing here or wherever it's great if you basically uh, cover it and repair it as soon as possible but we will talk about this some other time okay well, let me show you how to tie the man when you want to fix basically the position then your man is new and uh, the shape is not there okay so you basically make this cross okay and you follow this diagonal line I was telling you about okay and the second one so when you basically open your man has this shape okay so some it's something like this when you are wearing it okay it shouldn't be like this okay that's uh, terrible okay maybe they did it in very old ages but nowadays we really shape our mendis and this part can be wide open okay so you, it doesn't drop your ears really and this top part can be slim and narrow okay just around your head so you move the uh, move those sides around the diagonal lines and basically you can use your emo to tie it that way okay so right now i'm basically running the hemo from top of my man to the back okay so here's the diagonal lines okay and to the front Something like this. Something like this. And you can do a regular round here. Okay, so it will be like this. OK, 
Okay, so this is the circling here, the opening, and it gets a little bit narrower. This is the diagonal line from your uh, basic chin, from your uh, skidare, to the level of your monomy, of your eyes, of that wide opening. Okay, so this way is basically. are sure that your man will be shaped like a pro, uh, ready for all Japan Kinder Championship. Yeah. You can store it this way, it can be somewhere, just put it on the ground. I could tell me you are explaining everything I think, that's it. So enjoy your bobo. And how it fit you and you have a lot of fun with it. Bye bye. Good